We have an excited ant crawling around a cube, starting at this vortex, and every move, it's moving along an edge to an adjacent vortex. So after one move, it may go this way, to this vortex, or to this vortex, or all the way down to this vortex. And we want to find how many possible ways can the ant travel such that it is located at the vortex diagonally opposite from the starting vortex, so this one, at the end of its seventh move. And we know that the ant can visit the end vortex one or multiple times during the travel. So let's think about what this means. So let's try to count one way just for the sake of it. So we know one possible path is going down this way. So let's try to formulate one. So here's one move, here's two moves. We can visit the end vortex during the travel if we want to. So here's the third one. And we can do four, five, go back down six, then we can go back this way to seven. And obviously, trying to count every single possible path one by one is going to take a long time. And who knows, there may be thousands of them. So doing it one by one is not the way to go. So how can we count this? How can we count the number of possible ways the end can go from start to the end in seven moves? Before I go on, I want to recognize Arbitrary Renaissance for being the very first person to correctly answer this question with the answer of 546. Let's see if we can obtain the same answer. So we want to get 546. That's pretty large, so I'm glad we didn't try counting it one by one. And in this video, I will show you two different methods of finding the answer. And the first one is going to be the method using recursion recursion and the second method second method is going to be from arbitrary renaissance and i will showcase what arbitrary renaissance did to find the answer so i will present arbitrary renaissance's answer i will change it slightly just to fit my way of explanation but the overall concept is going to be the same but that's going to be the second method so from arbitrary from arbitrary renaissance. So I will show you two different solutions, one using recursion and the second method using what arbitrary renaissance did. Let's start with recursion. We see that we're going all the way to 7's move, and we see that 7 isn't very large. If it was per se 2018's move, obviously trying to do it by recursion is going to take a long time, but 7's move seems reasonable. Also, why do we think of recursion? Why do we think recursion is possible in this problem? Well, let's say from this vertex, there are 10 ways. There are 10 ways of reaching the end, of reaching the end. Let me just make up some numbers. Reaching the end in six moves, in six moves. And let's say it's also 10 ways from this vertex, and it's also 10 ways from this vertex. And now let me ask you the question, how many ways can the end go from start to the end in 7 moves if this thing was the case? Well, it should be 30, because there's 3 different ways, and can either go this way, this way, or this way for the first move. So there's 3 different choices for the first move, and once it makes the first move, there's 10 different ways of going to the end, because whichever choice he makes, those 3 different ways, there's going to be 10 different ways of reaching the end. So 3 times 10 gets you 30 ways. And realize, we figured out how many ways the end can go from start to end in 7 moves, based on how many ways you can go from start to end in 6 moves from some vertex. So it feels like we can use recursion, because finding the number of ways to go from start to the end in one move in one move is very very easy, and maybe we can use this to find the number of ways using two moves, then you uh, use that information to find the number of ways using three moves, four moves, all the way to seven moves. So it seems like recursion may be a nice way of approaching this question. Now let's actually try to set up the recursion, that's the hardest part, but once we have the recursion set up, we should be able to find the answer reasonably quickly just making a table out of it. So let's make a let's make a table. We see that there are four different groups 
of vertices in this cube. The first group contains of this tight vertex, and the second group contains this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex. So this one is the second one. Because you, to go from first to the second one, we need one move. So that's one away from the start. And there's another set of vertices, namely this one, this one, and this one. So let's say group number three, because you need two different moves to get to this vertex right away. And let's let the end vertex be its own separate group. So there are four different groups we're talking about. The first one is going to be from the start. Second one is going to be these three. Third one is going to be these three. And fourth one is going to be one vertex at the end. I am just grouping them based on their symmetry so recursion can work out nicely. And let's define some notations. Let's say a sub n is the number of ways, number of ways, number of ways of going from the start vertex, so the vertex number one, all the way to the end vertex. So let's say that's a sub n in n moves, in n moves, and for b sub n, let's say that's the number of ways to go from two, one of the vertices in group number two, for example, this one or this one. So number of ways to go from a vertex, one of the vertices in group number two, so vertex two, all the way to the end. So let's let that be b sub n. And c sub n is going to be the number of ways to go from three to four, and d sub n is going to be the number of ways of starting at the end vertex and finishing at the end vertex in n moves. And obviously we have to write in n moves for every single one in n moves. So now let's try to set up the recursion. How can we get the recursive equation for a sub n? Well, for the a sub n, we want to go from the first vertex all the way to the fourth vertex, but we have to start out moving to one of the vertices in group number two. So there are three different ways of going to group number two, and for each of them, we are going to have, so there's three different ways of going to group number two, and you're using up one move. So from the group number two, to go all the way to the end, we have to multiply by b sub n minus one, number of ways of going from group number two all the way to the end in n minus one moves now, because you used up one move. And let's go on, and it's pretty easy to figure out the equations for b sub n, c sub n, and d sub n. So let's find them really quickly. b sub n, well, starting at one of the vertices in group number two, for example, this one, we can either go to the start vertex and go to the end. That's going to be a sub n minus one, going to going from the starting vertex to the end vertex in n minus one moves. Or we can go to one of the vertices in group number three. So this one or this one. So there's two different ways and then we can go to the end. So c sub n minus one, three, two, four. And for c sub n, using the same logic, we can either go to the end vertex straight away and try to go from end to the end. So that's d sub n minus one plus, or we can go, or we can go to one of the vertices in group number two. So we can either go to this one or to this one and then go to the end. So two times b sub n minus one. And finally, for if you're starting at the end vertex, you can go to one of the three vertices in group number three. So you can either go to this one, this one, or this one. So three different choices, and each of them with c sub n minus one. So we have the recursion set up, and let's try to find some basic values. What's a sub one, b sub one, c sub one, and d sub one? Well, a sub one, there's no way to go from the start vertex to the end vertex in one move, so that's zero ways. And b sub one, you cannot go from one of the vertices in group number two to the end in one move, so that's zero. And c sub one, on the other hand, we can go from one of the vertices in group number three to the end in one move, only one way, just by going straight down or, or this way or this way. So c sub n is one, and for d sub one, how many ways can we go from the end to the end in one move? Well, after making one move, you have to move away from the vertex number four. So there's no ways of doing that. And now let's set up the table. Now let's set up the table. So n, a sub n, b sub n, c sub n, d sub n, and, and we're going all the way to seven. 
and we want to find the ace of seven. We want to find the number of ways of going from first to the end in seven moves. So we want to find ace of seven, and we know the starting values are zero, zero, one, zero, and we have all the equations. So for example, a sub 2 is going to be 3 times b sub n minus 1, so 0 times 3, getting a 0. And b sub 2 is going to be a sub n minus 1, this thing, plus 2 times c sub n minus 1, so 0 plus 2 times 1. So it's going to be 2, and c sub n is going to be d sub n minus 1, plus 2 times b sub n minus 1, that's 0. And d sub n is 3 times c sub n minus 1, or 3. And you can continue filling this out, let me just do it. When you fill it out, this is what you're supposed to get. 6, 0, 7, 0, 0, 20, 0, 21, uh, 60, 0, 61, 0, 0, 182, 0, 183, and it shouldn't take you too long to do this by hand. And we have 546, 0, 547, 0. So we see that our final answer is 546. And hopefully you see that this recursion argument is very powerful. This recursion argument is very powerful because using this, we can also find the number of ways of going from, let's say, end vertex to the end vertex in 6 moves. That's 183. And we can find the number of ways of going from one of the vertices in group B to the end in 6 moves. That's 182. So we can find a bunch of other numbers. And also, hopefully you see that you can also use this argument for, for example, tetrahedron or even octahedron. You can set up the vertices in similar a symmetric way, put them into groups, and set up the recursion, and generate similar problems. So recursion is going to work out in many many ways, and hopefully you found this educational. But now let's go on to see a more elegant approach that arbitrary renaissance used to directly count the number. And for this, let's go all the way down, and let me copy the diagram of the cube. So here's the diagram, and let's try to directly count it. First of all, because the cube is three-dimensional, we know we can break it apart into the movement in x direction. So if it's moving in this way, you're moving in positive x direction perhaps, and if you're moving this way, you're moving in negative x direction. So we can say this direction is x, we can say this direction is y, and we can say the direction down is z. And we see to go from, to go from start to the end vertex, do we know anything about the number of movements? Do we know anything about the number of movements in x direction? In x direction. We see that if we go to x direction once, now it's possible for us to go to the end by going y then z. So we can go to the x direction once. So we can so this number can be 1, 1 is okay. But if we go twice, if we go to x direction once and then x direction back. So if we are going this x direction, and if we are coming back, then now there's no ways of reaching the end using y and z. Once you do one x direction and the another x direction, so if we do two of them, now just by using y direction and z direction moves, there's no way you can go to the end. So two is not going to work. And we quickly see that three should work out, because if you move in x direction once, twice, then three times, now we can go to the end using y direction moves and z direction moves. And we see that this argument is going to work for, for y direction and z direction as well. The number of movements in y direction also has to be odd, so we're looking at odd numbers, and z, same for z direction, it has to be odd. So we know the number of movements in x direction, y direction and z direction, each has to be odd, and we know they have to add up to 7. They have to add up to 7 because we want to go from start to the end in 7 moves. So how can we represent 7 as sum of 3 different odd numbers? Well, 1 plus 3 plus 3 is one way, or we can do 1 plus 1 plus 5. And it's pretty easy to see that these are the only ways, because 3 plus 5 is already too large, and obviously we cannot use 7 because then the other moves has to be 0, but they have to be at least 1. And we see that 1 plus 3 plus 3, 1 plus 1 plus 5 are the only possible ways. 
And now let's try to think of how many different paths each case is considering. So for the first case, where we're moving one, one move in some direction, three moves in some direction, and three moves in some direction, we have to pick one direction, x, y, or z, to move one move. So we have there's three different ways of choosing that. There are three different ways of assigning this one to either x, y, or z. You can either give this to x direction, y direction, or z direction. And once we pick, for example, if we give one to the x direction, then we know y and z are going to be three each. So there's three different choices. And once we pick that, out of out of seven moves, we have to pick three of them. We have to pick three of them to give to one of the directions. And out of four leftovers, out of four leftovers, we gotta pick three more directions to give to one of the directions. And we should be counting every single way. If you're not following me, think of it like this. You're moving seven times, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's say, for example, let's say X is going one move, so we're doing one direction in X, and three direction in Y's, and three directions in Z. And we see one possible permutation is going to be X, Y, Z, Z, Y, Y, Z. One X, three Y's, and three Z. And this means you're going in X direction, you're going in Y direction, you're going in Z direction, then Z direction again, so go back up, then Y direction, so Y direction, so you're going to go this way, another y direction, so go, coming back, and you're finishing with z direction to go to the end. So this is one possible permutation of moves, and we are simply counting how many permutations there are corresponding to 1, 3, and 3. There are three different ways of picking which, which direction gets one move, and there are seven to three ways of picking those three moves out of seven for one of the one of the directions, and out of four leftover moves, there's three ways of giving three moves to one of the variables, and the and the last variable is going to get the rest. So three times seven to three times four to three should get you the value for the first one. And using the same reasoning for the second one, one plus one plus five, there's three different ways of choosing which direction gets five. There's seven choose one way. Of picking, of picking one spot out of seven spots for this variable, for this direction. And out of six leftovers, there is one way of giving the final direction, and the other five is going to be the last direction. So we know, once we add up this thing and this thing, we should be done. And the first one, we have 3 times 7 to 3 is 35, and 4 to 3 is 4, and we have plus... 3 times 7 times 6, 7 times 6, so adding it up, 35 times 4 is 140, times 3 is 420, plus 3 times 7 times 6 is 126, and we right away get the answer of 546. And we're done. Using two different methods, recursion and using some permutation based on how many moves we're making in each direction, we have found that our final answer is 546. So the answer to this question, number of ways of going from start to the end in 7 moves, is 546.